Hello everyone, my name is Monica Bhushan and today we are starting lecture number 11 of numerical methods. So in today's class we are going to build Lagrange's interpolation polynomial and Lagrange's inverse interpolation polynomial. Okay, in last class only we have seen how to solve the question using Lagrange's interpolation method and Lagrange's inverse interpolation method. But in today's class, we are going to see how to build the polynomial based on Lagrange's formula. Okay, so here are the questions. So very first question says that if y1 is 3, y3 is 9, y4 is 30 and y6 is 132, find Lagrange's interpolation polynomial that takes on these values. Okay, fine. So they have mentioned that we have to use Lagrange's interpolation polynomial and what they have given us? They have given us four data sets. Fine, no. This is what? This one is you can say x0 because y at x0 is 3. That means your y0, x0 is 1 and y0 is 3. This 3 is what? This 3 is x1. x1 is 3 and then y1 is 9 and so on. Fine. This is your x2. This is your x3. Okay. So, four data sets are given. xn is what? xn is here x3. That means n is 3. And why we are interested in finding out what is n? Because last class only we have discussed that if I have to build the Lagrange's interpolation formula, for that I need to know that how many terms will be there. So terms will depend on each and every question. Okay. In this question, since four data sets are there, this is one, this is two, three and four. So we will be having four terms in my formula. Okay. So in each and every term, we are going to write numerator and denominator. We have discussed these things right now and then in numerator and denominator we will be writing down x minus x, x minus x, x minus x but how many times we are going to write in numerator also, in denominator also. So it will depend on the xn. Fine. So here so n is 3. So 3 times we will be writing down in this fashion. Fine. And then we will be writing down here y. Similarly in each and every term we will be doing the same thing. So you remember it, correct? So this y will be what? This y will be your very first y that is your y0, right? This will be your y1, here it will be your y2, here it will be your y3. Till y3 only we have, okay? So if in the first term I have here, I have multiplied here y0, so I will be writing down here what? x0, 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 okay? X in the denominator I will be writing down x0. Okay, and in the numerator, very first x will be same as it is. It will be x only. So, other values of x will be what? Since we have used y0, so now it will be your x1, x2, x3 in the numerator also, in the denominator also. Fine, so first term is completed. So, what will be in my second term? Since I have multiplied the numerator with y1, so here the x1 will be present. Correct, no? x1 will be present. And the very first x will be as it is in the numerator. And after that, we are going to write not, I mean, x0, x2, x3. Because x1 already we are using in the denominator. So this will be your x0, x2, x3 and so on. Fine. This is the formula for Lagrange's interpolation. But here the question is what they are asking us to find the Lagrange's interpolation polynomial. Okay. And the values are given. So polynomial will be the general term to build the polynomial we will have to keep x as it is right there won't be any value given to you for x right now but we are going to put all other values right so this is the formula okay so this is the formula of our Lagrange's interpolation method and then x will be as it is but all other than x we are going to put the values fine all those values are given to us. How this minus 2 has come? So this is your x0 minus x1. What is your x0? So your x0 is 1, x0 minus x1. And what is your x1? x1 is 3. So that means 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Fine. So this way we have written down here minus 2. And similarly this will be your x0 minus x2. We will just be putting the values. And then things are done. Okay. After that what we have to do? If it was just Lagrange's interpolation formula, so they must have given you the value of x. So in that case, you will be getting some numerical value. Okay. 
but to build the polynomial x will be as it is it will be called as general term okay later on you can put the values of x depending on the if they are asking or not so here what we are going to do so then you just have to simplify it correct no so this is nothing but uh, 10 and then minus 10 so the denominator is your minus 10 fine and then numerator is what numerator is x minus 3 x minus 4 x minus 6 fine so how to solve this one way is you just multiply uh, this factor with this factor then you multiply with this factor or the other way is what you just have to put one formula okay we are going to see that formula and then the same way you have to solve in in each and every term fine fine so you have done the calculation how much you can do so here this 1 by 10 is taken common so if you don't want to take common then then you may leave it so it all depends right how you are doing the calculation but the main thing is using this formula okay so this formula is what so if three factors are there this is your x minus a x minus b x minus c then you can straightforward use this formula this is your x cube minus x square in bracket a plus b plus c plus x in bracket a b plus b c plus c a minus a b c fine no so this is in the power of x so x cube x square x power 1 x power 0 so that's the same formula we can use in our all terms so here this is your x cube as it is written down now x square is there but this is minus 13 how this minus 13 has come a plus b plus c so what is your a plus b plus c so here this is your x minus a this is your x minus b and this is your x minus c okay so what is the value of a a is 3 fine b is 4 and c is and c is 6 so a is not minus 3 why because the term is x minus a so a is not minus 3 a is 3 similarly b is 4 and c is 6 okay and then this is what a plus b plus c is what 3 plus 4 plus 6 that means 10 13 so 13 so here it is your uh, here it is your minus x square into 13 so minus x square into 13 and this minus sign is what this minus sign is as it is from here we have taken okay so similarly you can similarly you can use the formula in the second term third term and fourth term and then finally you will get the answer in polynomial form here also you can simplify 10 is their final required polynomial is 1 by 5 4x cube minus 2x square minus 29x plus 42 fine so this way we build the lagrange's interpolation polynomial okay so next next question is what interpolating polynomial of the form x equals if y okay for the data and hence find x at 5 and y at 5 so what does it mean they are saying that first thing is they have not mentioned that which interpolating polynomial you have to use totally depends on you so lagrange's interpolation polynomial is actually you can use whether the gap between the uh, values of x is same or not same you can use lagrange's interpolating polynomial that means the interval between the different instances of x if they are same or not same still you can use lagrange's interpolating polynomial so this question we are going to solve using lagrange's method but we have to be careful that whether we have to use lagrange's interpolation formula or lagrange's inverse interpolation formula so one benefit of lagrange's method is what the same formula you will be using for your inverse interpolation formula also just you will be interchanging x with y fine no so you don't have to memorize the other formula for that so here we have to think that whether we have to use lagrange's following lagrange's method or lagrange's inverse method they are saying that the interpolating polynomial is of the form of x equals f y right so x and y is given and if they are saying that x equals f y then we have to use lagrange's inverse interpolation formula fine so why we have to do it because if they were asking that y equals okay y equals fx so in that case we must have used lagrange's interpolation formula okay so this way we have to be little careful and then based on that formula only we have to find x at y value 5 and y at x value 5 okay so in that formula only we have to put the values so 
there are three terms okay so three data sets are given to you this is the very first data set second and then third so here you can say that this is your x naught and then this is your y naught this is your x1 this is your y1 and then this is your x2 and y2 so three terms will be there in my formula fine because three data sets are there so this is much easier it is not going to be very lengthy and in the numerator and denominator we will be writing down y minus y Fine, no, we will not be writing down x minus x because the formula is in form of x equals, fine, x equals fy. That means y form will be present here. But how many times we are going to write y minus y? It will depend on how many, it will depend on what is my yn. Okay, y2 is there. The maximum yn is what? y2. That means n is 2. That means only two times we will be writing down in the numerator and in the denominator uh, this y minus y. Okay, but only in the three terms we have to write. And then we have to multiply with x. Fine, we have to multiply with x. Similarly, in my third term also we will be doing in the same fashion. Okay, fine. And then we are going to multiply with x. And here it will be x0, here it will be x1, here it will be x2. If x0 is present here, so y0 minus y, y0 minus y, okay? And y0 we have already used, so here it will be your y1 and then y2. y will be as it is, very first y in the numerator will be as it is, okay? y minus y1, y minus y2. Similarly, this is my x1, so I am going to put y1 here, y1 here. Very first y will be y1, y1. And the second y in the numerator and denominator we are going to put as what? x1 already have been used so it will be your uh, y1 already have been used so it will be your y0 and then y2 fine here it is what x2 so y2 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 you have used so it will be y0 y1 y0 y1 so this is the formula for your Lagrange's inverse interpolation method and since we have to build the polynomial first, okay, we have to build the polynomial first. So, y will be as it is. We are not going to replace y right now with any value, okay. So, same thing we have said here. And then what we are going to do? We are going to substitute the values other than for y. And then finally, and then finally we have got something like this, okay. So, you have to simplify it here. Just you, you just have to multiply these two factors and then you got something like this, okay. And finally, what we are doing, after that, we are going to make, this is more simplified, uh, take common all y square terms, take common all y terms, and then without y term. So, it will be actually very simple form, that is your x is y square plus 1. If you are simplifying this complete thing, you will be getting, this is nothing but y square plus 1. Okay, so this is only my required polynomial. Now, on this polynomial only we have to substitute the value and what value we are going to substitute? We have to find x at y equals 5. This is what they are asking and what they are asking here? Here they are asking that on the same polynomial, okay, you put the value of x as 5 and then find the value uh, in that case, okay. So, same thing we are doing here. So, at y equals 5, okay, y equals 5, x is how much? 25 plus 1, 26. At x equals 5, so here in the left hand side, we are going to put x as 5 and then y square is how much? It is 4. So, y square is 4 and if you are not taking the negative value, so y will be just 2, okay. So, you can write this as your answer that if uh, that x at 5 is 26 and y at 5 is 2, fine. So if you find this class useful, please like and subscribe my channel. Thank you.